do, was my sound okay? Uh, hopefully your sound is fine because we're live. Okay. It's the Stardock stream. Hello. I'm Adel. I'm, I'm Adam. That's Paul. Adel. I've already He's addled. I'm, I've already failed at streaming, and we have literally just started. Uh, anyway, we are showing off Galactic Civilizations 3 today, as we do every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern. We have today for you an internal build. What you see here is Paul uh, doing a little cheating because he wants to show off some stuff in particular. And uh, uh, one of the exciting things, really exciting for us internally, actually, is that uh, Jesse, one of our engineers, uh, just put together a thing where you can uh, text, you can put a bunch of cheat commands in a text file and then just say run whatever dot text if it's in the right directory and it'll do a bunch of cheat file cheating, which you see there. Bang. Uh, which is super awesome. Maximum well, as cheating. somebody who has to test these things <laughs> constantly, it's so nice. It saves me hours and hours and hours of time. So, and okay, it saves so. us hours of time spawning things in to uh, show you off, show off what we are working on to you guys on the stream. So that's exciting as well. So uh, we're not going to stop cheating. I'm sorry, that is just not going to happen. Uh, we're going to cheat to the maximum, and that's basically how it's going to work. Although, ironically, the whole point of all of this cheating was to show that I'm not cheating um, when it comes to the size of battles. Oh, sure. So what I wanted to do with this. We don't care about these guys. These guys are the loser fleets. These are the ones we care about. Um, what we're going to do is I made a... These are actually... These are a little bit cheaty. Well, they're not cheaty. They're 49 logistics of 42. And that's because I... I unlock the text, but this doesn't include like bonuses from racial traits or anything like that. Oh, okay. So you can actually get a little bigger. So 49 is a more realistic size, and that will probably be going up, actually. So, um, but what I do have here is a somewhat um, balanced battle of uh, some beam ships and some mass driver ships. We're having a bug right now with the missiles, so I didn't want to put any missiles in right now. Um, because the, they get wander off and, and it, it hurts performance and that's embarrassing. So uh, I didn't want to show that, but we can show this. So this should be interesting. What is happening? Did I actually not move? Uh, we had oh, a question. I okay, I was not. Yes. Well, pretty, pretty softball question for you here, but that's okay. okay. Any particular focus on today's stream that you want to uh, share with our viewers? I don't actually know what you're showing us. Um, well, mostly, you know, I'm in battle viewer world. I mean, that's all I've been worrying about right now, and that and custom factions. But I can't show custom factions. I can't show the campaign. <laughs> and the battle viewer is the prettiest thing right now, even though it's not done. One of the things I really want to show off, and hopefully we'll get some, we don't know because we're just starting this battle from scratch, is the new explosions are awesome. And they're not quite done, but they are awesome. So this is going to be, we'll start off with a, their traditional, wow, that's kind of cool, top-down battle. What this did was it unlocked um, some mass driver ships and some beam ships in waves of technology. So essentially what you ha are going to have here is some ships with lasers and some ships with cannons and then other ships with disruptors and other ships with plasma and other ships and same with the defenses. So this should be, I mean, honestly, in a real game, late game, you'll ha probably all be of the same tech level, but this will make it a little more interesting. Um, I know a couple people were bitching the battles ended too soon last week. <laughs> I mean, like, because they just... <laughs> right. And um, that's one of the things that will be adjustable. You'll be able to slow it down. Or or actually, honestly, when you're playing for real and you don't have these big fleets up against each other, people will last a little longer. But personally, we do want them to be able to resolve relatively quickly because, you know, you might have five of these battles in a turn, um, especially in a big map. So let's see what happens, and hopefully this won't embarrass me. And this is top down, which is like the most boring view. But yeah, you see, okay, so there's some disruptors, some lasers. Now the cannons are starting to go off. And then this guy's got, ooh, and everybody's dying before they even get to close. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, these guys in the back have doom rays, and they're shooting way up into, into the front, taking out these fighters that are coming in. Oh, I like the beams better this way. You know, uh, I was... Well, we're going to do, there's a little mix and match right now. They're not done. Some of the smaller beams will be like that. And then, like, the Doom Ray will probably still be a boom. So, uh, 
When, well, it's it's a little bit. It, it looks a little bit cooler when there's a whole bunch of them in the battle. Yeah, this yeah. way for sure. Yeah. So wow, I guess the Terrans went. Oh, it's be. I mean, the Drenzen went. It's always their damn hit point bonus. It's seriously. It's so. It's so huge. It's a twenty percent, and when you're doing these big fleets, twenty percent is a, is a lot of percent. That's a lot of. Percent. <laughs> Okay, but anyways, <laughs> now let's do another one and do it in cinematic so we can maybe see some cool explosions. Do we have any uh, other questions? Oh, we have so many questions. Uh, let's see. Let me scroll back through the chat. Uh, okay. Oh, will weapons be influenced by the scenario or the, I think he means the context in which the battle's happening, like uh, in an asteroid field, missiles could be less effective or yes. the nebula shields Well, will... in that they will be affected by the tile they're in. Okay. So, so like if you are in a, a nebula and beam weapons are less effective, then they are less effective in the battle. Now, um, we haven't really set up the uh, re the skyboxes to kind of reflect that yet. Sure. Um, Jesse actually wants to have asteroids and stuff floating around in the battle. I'm a little worried about that, <laughs> um, but at the very least, we'll have them, you know, floating around the sides. Man, and uh, so, Paul, I got to tell you, as as your guy who's in charge of putting together screenshots and things, it kills me when we go out with like, hey, we got the you know beta four release, we got the battle viewer in, and then like two weeks later, it looks. Way I better. told everybody it would. <laughs> Matter of fact, I believe my thought was, this is a preview of the battle viewer. Don't be too upset. Oh, uh, persisting <laughs> particles. <laughs> Oh, so I'm hoping for there's some pretty usually when the big ships go, there's some awesome explosions. Here, let's see. And this yellow outline shouldn't be happening. Yeah, it's really distracting. The, the uh, that is that is only if you're selected, but by default. Look at that. Oh, that's pretty sweet. No, yeah, man, explosions look so much better. Well, than they do. and actually, I wanted to. What is this? Oh, go ship I don't again. Know. Uh, no. uh, 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 oh, okay. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to go to free cam and get a good yeah. shot of that thing going up. Oh, look, this time the Terrans won. So, hey, that is weird. Well, it's good to have a little RNG in your battles. Yeah. That's okay. Well, no, I mean, it is actually, it's not weird. It's actually correct. It's <laughs> just that sometimes we get used to it being, well, oh, hit points makes all the difference. Uh, and in this case, it's probably accuracy made a big difference or whatever. Okay. Oh, I love this. Okay. We do have a bunch of people asking about racial traits and it's sad that we're not showing off the racial traits. Well, the racial any... traits are primarily, I can tell you about, oh, you mean the, I'm assuming they talk about the ability. I assume that's what people are concerned um, about here, yes. The, uh, oh, ouch. Sorry, I get distracted by it. Boom. Uh, where was that? I'm oh, sorry, I just want to get to that one ship. Oh, when he goes. No, that's not even the big one. This is the, this is the big one that's going to go. <laughs> okay, so... When, um, oh, what was I saying? Okay, so racial, tr uh, the uh, racial abilities are going to be coming in. Um, we've got them all spec'd out. I might tweak them a little, but I can kind of run down a couple of them. I think um, you should totally do that. Well, we're here, and I'll just let the battles play, and we'll talk. Um, oh, come on, blow up. Oh, did they win? <laughs> oh, no, he's definitely not winning. <laughs> <laughs> ah, come on, give me a good. Oh, oh there, there you go. There he goes. There he goes. There he goes. Look at that. And now we, we still got to get some, some more art to the falling apart part, but it's really awesome because they actually look like they're cracking from the inside. That's awesome. It, yeah, it's pretty neat. Anyways, I'll just let this loop or play, and uh, we'll, we'll talk. Okay, so racial abilities. <laughs> let me put this in cinematic so I don't have to actually do any work. Okay, so racial abilities are um, every race will have two, and this is – I'm doing this, this – we kind of actually had a little bit of an de internal debate – about uh, the abilities because you want one, I mean, for a designer, you want that one thing that makes the race play completely different. But as a game that has custom factions, I wanted players to be able to kind of build their own. I don't want you to go, the minute I take this, I might as well be playing as the Altarians, right? So what we've done is it's gonna be like, um, you'll go through and you'll pick all your, um, your, your traits which are the, you know, more they're just bonuses, right? Like uh, this gives me a logistics bonus. This makes people like me more. You'll be able to spend five points getting that, which is what you see in the game right now when you look at the Terrans. It says racial traits, you know, their diplom diplomacy. You'll be able to spend those however you want. Then you can pick two, uh, two racial traits, I mean, two abilities, and the abilities will be more special. They actually affect how the game works. Like one of the, the only one that is really in right now is synthetic, and that, makes it so that you can build people. That's kind of a big deal. Um, then right now the Yor also have adaptable, though it's not really uh, put on there, which gives you 
you can colonize uh, extreme planets uh, from turn from like really early game. Um, then there's uh, what's I was saying? Okay, and then okay, so and then but there's other ones like um, one is the Terran ones are one is colonizers, which gives you a free colony ship at the beginning of the game. It's Super pretty good. awesome, Super but good. it also finishes the first non wonder improvement on every colony for free. Oh, okay. So when you colonize, you can build, get that first factory for free. Or if it's influencer, you can get that first influence. So it's it's not supposed to be super overpowered, but it does give you that little edge. Sure. And that's what we want. Um, the other one they have is their engineers, which means their shipyards don't decay, which is giant and possibly game-breaking. So I might have to... Oh, so their shipyards don't... Like the, the, the uh, you production You can have every planet in your galaxy doing one shipyard. Now, this is going to get our, our buddy who's always yelling at me about the overflow <laughs> really mad. That's true. And uh, that is because we can't have a ship... We can't have things making more than one thing in a turn. Right. So what we're going to end up doing... Here, let's get more carnage in going on. That's an excellent idea. Um, oh, this guy will die shortly. <laughs> That's a nice shot. That is kind of a cool shot. I'm always shocked when the cinematic camera turn, comes out with something really cool. <laughs> we really need to be able to polish that more. Yeah. Um, ooh, 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 he's going to die. Uh, so I hope he's going to die. The fleet that big attacking him. Uh, oh, goodbye. Oh, camera blocker. <laughs> Anyways, so, yeah, so what was I saying? Oh, yeah, so we can't have people, uh, we can't let things go. So the, the trick to that is build more shipyards. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you are literally overflowing, we overflow one. And that is on purpose. We can't overflow more than one. Now, when you say one, you mean one ship's worth of production. We overflow one more, one turn in. So if you're building a, f a, a, a dreadnought, right, and you cancel the dreadnought, or if you finish it, and then, and because you're doing 50 turns at a time, and you want to build a, a sniper, you might actually technically have enough points in that turn to build two snipers. But you'll build one, and then the next one will be free. It won't be free. It'll go into the next turn. But we didn't, don't take those tur points the next turn and give you another free one, another one, because essentially you'd end up with this dog pile of, of things. So what is what is your, uh, I guess, design philosophy reason for not allowing more than one ship per turn per shipyard? <clears throat> uh, it's just game. It's just game breaking. I mean, a lot of games do that. Most games actually do this. Don't allow you to, like, especially turn-based games. You can't sure. ever build anything more than one per turn. Outside of games where, like, where things just stack into yeah, one block, right? Like, here's a real-time strategy. Something. You know, is different because they don't really have turns. They're just cranking sure. them at whatever sure. rate. Whereas we actually have pauses. So that's a reason why we do that. And I briefly toyed with not doing it, and because I know it would make certain people happy. But it's really game breaking, and also, and here's the main reason: shipyards. <laughs> I have a galaxy full of 100 planets, right? I may, I'm making the thousand ships a turn. You know, yeah, you can make a thousand ships a turn, build a thousand shipyards. And shipyards are cheap if you really yeah, want to be able. So, to yeah, so yeah. Although I'm going to make them more expensive. <laughs> not <laughs> not that much more, but I need them to be a little bit more of a challenge so that you don't get that. Uh, here, let's let's do a, a lame fleet versus a lame fleet while we're waiting. Um, oh, actually, this isn't a lame fleet. This is a slaughter. Okay. So um, anyways, aside from that, so that's a pretty awesome uh, uh, trait for the Terrans. And as a matter of fact, I'm worried it's a little overpowered. People in chat are very excited about abusive things that they can do with shipyards. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> um, the Terrans will have a good time with that. We might have to nerf a little. We might have to make it so their decay is half of everybody else's sure. or something like that. Or... Um, but I'm for now. I'm going to start with it overpowered and see how it goes. It, it'll really only. I suspect it'll really only be an issue on larger maps, where you know, you're, you're able to to immediately crank all of the production of your sieve to the other side of the freaking galaxy. Yeah. With a bunch of shipyards. Well, yeah, and also that, right? it's like I I throw a constructor out there. I build a next to your planet. I channel all 50 right. of my planets there. I'm getting a huge or whatever. And then a giant turn. armada of people jump out and kill right. you. And yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's not necessarily fair. But I'm fine with game-breaking things. I just need to make sure, sure that they're counterable by sure. other players. Um, and, and also by the AI. Um, okay, yeah. so then what's next? Drenjin. Drenjin have... Uh, I think it's called... Um, brutality or something. Where they, they get all of their... 
um, invasions for free. They don't pay for any oh. type of invasion. So that's pretty big. Because um, some of the invasion types are pretty expensive. Um, I know that players are like, what invasion types? I haven't seen that yet. But uh, that's coming. Um, the other thing is... Um, okay, let's see. What was the other Drenjin one? Something really good. Uh, while you're trying to think of that, uh, control N, in or out. People oh, no, it's in. It's just it, we have to get to it. And the problem is as the bit, we're still changing structure, so it's easier for us to just do that at the end. Sure. Um, so, yeah, that is definitely planned. That could even slip to like a 1.1 patch. It's not something that we're super passionate about, but as people who play the game, we want it. <laughs> so... Yeah. Control N, if you're not familiar, is a traditional cheat in start in Stardock games. And all just... pretty much all stra- I don't I'm mean, assuming other strategy games have done the same thing. If for... they do, I've never used it. But anyway, it lets you just it, it, when you when you load in, it'll just start a new game with your current settings. It'll basically regenerate yeah. the map. Yeah. Um, and that way you can yeah, I don't like where I'm starting. Right. Right. Now we might disable it in a multiplayer game or something, but but because uh, that would be ooh, that was a nice explosion. Um Somebody and, asked in chat if I was wearing a Packers shirt, and I had to uh, to put a, the kibosh on that immediately. Was that great? What is that? It's uh, uh, This is a North Star shirt. From okay. The, the Minnesota hockey team that was stolen by Norm Coleman uh, and taken to Dallas, the traditional hockey fortress. Now, hockey is the game with the the sticks. Oh, I don't want to. No, I can't talk to you about this. Ball. Anyways. So, uh, actually, you talk to Sarah and, and Charles. They're, they're all. They'll. They'll issue because they're Red Wings fans. Right? And oh yeah, there's a there's a fair number of there's Red Wings fans. Red in Wings this fans turn, here. This turn out. Yeah. Okay, anyway, so the Drenjin get invasions for free and there's something else they oh, they have a thing called zealots where every invasion, successful invasion gives them ideology points. Oh that's and it doesn't awesome. have to be evil ideology points. It's just sure. whatever their I mean it's probably all <laughs> <laughs> but whatever their uh, most prevalent ideology, they'll get oh, free okay. points. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then the Altarians are, um, they have Ancient, which is la- gives them free research points from any uh, relics. So okay. if you, um, either Ascension Gates or relics. And you, literally, it's like having a factory. So those are really cool. It's a little more subtle. Um, what is the other Altarian one? Something cool. Um, oh, we had a, a question that's easy to answer. Will we have a planet army battle viewer? Yes, you will. Uh, that's what the a lot of our engineers are working it's on. It's not a planet army well, battle it's, viewer. Sorry, it's not it's a the, surface. Yeah. Okay. It's the invasion yeah. viewer. We anyway. have an invasion thing, and it's still it. We, it's all spec'd out. They're working on it. Um, we're not willing to show it to anybody yet because it might change. So, but yeah, it's sure. it's uh, largely based on battle viewer code and. But the, the, the battle, uh, the invasion stuff is actually all fleshed out and, and designed and is where you have a planetary resistance versus and planetary defense versus soldiering and invasion. So uh, however many transports you bring and how many pods are on those transports um, and whatever your soldiering skill is, is how well you're going to invade. And then the different invasion strategies, just like in Gals of 2, will give you advantages that in Gals of 2, they were more like, here's just, here's a better chance. It's going to cost you more money. Whereas sure. now there's literally like some strategies are better uh, versus different types of things. Also, okay. we're going to have some planets and some races and some traits, planetary traits that make certain invasion strategies. Impossible. Oh, sure. So it's like you can't, like you might have a race. I was thinking about having a minor race that lives underground and bombardment is useless against them. Sure. Right. So you might... But also, like, bombardment is awesome because it g- increases your odds, but it wrecks the planet. Right. Um, also, unlike in Galaxy of 2, uh, it's not winter. T- it's not destroy the population. It is destroy the population, depending on the, s- the strategy you use. But er- what ends up happening is each pod goes down and tackles one tile at a time. Bang, 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 bang. And if it wins, it goes to the next tile. It goes to the next tile. It goes to the next tile. And each time it wins... X number of people can survive. So if you're doing bombardment, it might be 1%. If you're doing <laughs> uh, traditional or information, it might be 90%. So you can win a battle and keep 80% of the population alive. Or you can wreck the planet and keep 4% of the planet, but, but have much higher odds of winning. So these are kind of like different strategies. Um, 
And that's just the way it works out. It's, it's, it's a little more clear than it was in Galsiv where you're like, a soldiering and they've got 300 population. How are my eight soldiers killing them? Sure. So this is a little um, a little bit more clear. But that is what is that's working. And that, that part is pretty much uh, got working as planned and is, is good to go. It's, it's the visuals that we're still toying with. Um, okay, so the what's it? Then we got the Altarians. We got the the um, ancient, and they had something else cool. I forget what it was. <laughs> That's okay. You don't have to actually have okay. to run through all of the. I'm uh, trying to think of, of some of the cooler here. ones. Oh, the 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 Iconians have one called Paran. I I'll probably have to change the name. It's called Paranoid. And it gives <laughs> them free fighter drones on all of their star bases, planets, and shipyards. Oh. So they're not like the, the highest end thing, but they're super nice, and especially early game. Right. Nice. Um, the Thalion have uh, start the game. They have one called Knowledgeable, and they start the game with a bunch of research points. Because they come from another dimension. Yeah. Don't you so know? they start. Well, in Galsim 2, we just gave them a bunch of text. Whereas that's, I want to literally, I want to let the player, the player starts it, bam, pick five pick, picks. Oh, okay, sure, sure, sure. So this, it's, a, it's, it's kind of in a weird way. It's like the build your own ability ability right <laughs> sure um, that's cool though yeah um, uh, we had a, a couple of questions in the chat uh, just about uh, ship roles and how they work and and can you give your ships orders and that kind of thing just to, to clear it up uh, for people who haven't been watching all of our streams uh, you don't control your ships in battle in Galactic Civilization 3 they are controlled by their ship roles which are determined by their size and what uh, equipment they have on them yes. uh and and so they they target and behave accordingly in battle according to that yes. um the combat viewer is literally just a combat viewer uh no you don't get to go in and assign different roles to your ships it's it's all in the design if you want to have it be a a, a support ship put support modules on yes. it um so just to, to clear that up quickly um Anyway, what minor races are in? People miss the Archeans. Um, the Archeans are probably coming back as a major in an expansion, so okay. I don't want to. They probably won't. I probably won't bother putting them in as a because as a, they are in the lore and there's. Sure. And and honestly, when they do come back, they're gonna be kind of a minor because they've been pretty much obliterated. But I but they'll come back as a playable race, so they will not be a minor. Right now, we're gonna bring back some of the. We're gonna bring back the Snathy. We're gonna bring back a couple of the. Other miners, but but we have a bunch of really cool portraits that we're using, and we're gonna probably make some new ones that kind of tell new stories and and uh, and then actually I was thinking what one of the things would be kind of fun to do is um, I'm gonna set this to half speed. <laughs> it kind of works better at half speed. To be yeah. Honest. Um, Although the beams do, get really slow. Do, <laughs> do. Um, oh, we need lens flares. That's what I was talking to Jesse. About <laughs> it's like I. It's like one of those things where everybody goes, "Yeah, that'd be cool," but it could be super overused. Right. Um. So, I was in the middle of a few minor more. races. Oh, minor races. So yeah, we're gonna try and create some new, uh, funner ones. Um. I'm also gonna have a little more flexibility in the miners. Um. Like I'm gonna have three or four tech trees that the miners can pick from. Whereas in Galsum Two, we just had a minor race tech tree. And sure. We have some, uh, you know, we have a little more flexible system for creating them, so it's going to be, we'll be able to make them a little more interesting. And then I would love to, at some point, have like a contest or whatever to have people pick ones that need to to turn to majors. So that would be fun. Sure. Uh, if if I have a ship with two tr two thrusters and the rest of them have one thruster, will the one with two thrusters foolishly charge ahead and die first? Depends on its role. Okay. Um, and what, uh, what it, like, if it's an escort, it will stick with whoever it's escorting. Okay. Um, if it's literally the, its job is to go fast, then yes, <laughs> you don't put multiple thrusters on a ship that you don't want to go into the Charging battle fast, in. but you put, you put a bunch of thrusters on a tiny ship with a bunch of shields. Right. And its job is to go take out and it flies right past all of the interceptors and blows up all the assault ships. Like, you know, that's a strategy. It's one of those things where it's like, if you just have giant death stacks, you're probably going to be fine. But if you want to, if the AI is on difficulty, a high difficulty, or if you're playing against a person, that's when it's going to become uh, fun to... Um, I don't know if anybody saw that we done. Oh, that looks way better. Uh, hey, look at that. Look at that tech yeah, tree. It's All just right. a little, just a little, put a background back there. Oh, hey, that looks way better. It sure does. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, um, hooray. 
So, yeah, so there's a lot of strategies to that. And really, and I keep saying this, and I know everybody, but remember I said that the Battle Fury is going to get better looking, so maybe you'll believe me. Um, <laughs> the, uh, actually, the, um, oh, this is going to end badly for them. Um, the, the, the augments and stuff are really, are going to be what really goes crazy. I did have to... I don't have any carriers in this. Um, I did have to nerf the carriers a little. <laughs> and the way I did that is not that I, I... They're still awesome because they respawn and they update. So And that's their superpower. Um, right. the People go, well, uh, well, if I just could build three ships, what's the point of having a carrier? And, because uh, your three ships can charge in and die. And yeah. in the next battle, and the next battle they can charge in and die right. again. Right. Um, but, uh, well, so that... But what I'm going to do is make it so carrier modules add logistics. So, oh, so they cost so more to put So you in can't fleet. put I, I don't want the game to be a race to have the most carriers in a fleet because <laughs> that's how you win. So what we're going to do is make it so that you know, and it's le it's legit, but it will be cheaper than bringing three fighters, but it will still be expensive. Cuz I want battles of, you know, 60 ships on a side, but I don't want battles of 128 ships on a side, all sure. fighters, you know. Sure. So that's the that's the challenge of balancing for that. Uh, we have a lot of great questions. I uh, apologize if I haven't gotten your questions here, everybody, but uh, it's it's hard Ooh, to keep up, and, and hopefully we're going into some interesting things. See, anyway. this Hyperion Shrinker yeah. here is the reason why those are wrong. This is a super... Oh, wait, am I at the right one? Capacity. Oh, no, that's Hyperion Logistics Center. This actually, if you build this on a planet... Every ship you build from the shipyard attached to that costs one less logistics point, which means a tiny costs one point. Uh, so that means you could have a fleet of 48 or whatever sure. tinies, but it also means that a huge now only costs eight or whatever. Right. So, And then you can, on Mars, build the Hyperion Shrinker, and that means every ship can hold more stuff. And then, so you, these things are, I mean, these are wonders, which we still okay. don't tell the player. But yeah. these are <laughs> we should probably, yeah. we'd probably call that out somewhere. Yeah. In the well, UI they're not a wonders; they're achievements. Wonder wonders are galaxy wide. Oh, and those and are achievements civ are wide. Civ wide. Okay, so you can only have one of those. But sure. it's it, they're very cool. Uh, I do want to get to some questions though. Oh wait, I want to really quick. Oh, okay. Oh no, I I killed it. I'm breaking uh, everything again. Oh, I, I I turned off the fog. I don't know uh, if people noticed. Oh, different uh, hex lines in the fog. Oh, no, you notice anything else different about the fog? Uh, it's transparent. It's transparent. I like that better. I don't it's know. It's a how nice I... little touch. It's not quite done. I don't know how I feel about the dotted hex lines in the you fog. Know, that looks weird. I also don't know how I feel about that. Now that it's transparent, I don't think the, we the, need it. The border on the fog is kind of nice. Yeah. Though. So we're we're playing with this, but. Um, it's funny because uh, Kay, who used to work with us and is still contracting with us, um, just wrote me out of nowhere and said, hey, what are you doing with the fog? And I said, well, I want to do something cooler, but I'm not quite sure what yet. And she said, how about you just do this? And she sent me a little mock-up, and I was able to just go into the data with Jesse's help and make this transparent. And I think this adds a lot. I think what we need now is some stars above the plane. So you can imagine a couple little point sprites above the plane to add some depth. So that makes me happy. Very cool. All right. All right. So, oh, somebody points out that Hyperion say on this planet, uh, ships made on this That's planet. That's a bug. That yeah. is a bug. Well, because yeah. star uh, shipyards or whatever are, are new as of beta three or two. Or They're whatever, not new. It's just that the, those improvements. I And I did check with Alan. Honestly, I haven't checked lately to make sure they work. I made sure that they work. And I hope they work. But we need to make it clear. We need to make sure. it clear. It's a lot of, and that's kind of what like the last month of development really, honestly will be was just making everything understandable. Whoa, right. what the? Yeah, a lot of a lot of tooltip polish and that kind of thing for sure. Uh, good question here. In Galsiv 2, while exploring, this has come up before, but that's okay. We could click on a star and see how many asteroids, habitable planets, extreme planets, and, and such like uh, were were in that s uh, solar system. Yes. Is that something that's going to return? Um, possibly. Uh, <laughs> I, I it's it, it's a little my purest side is like, well, you don't know what's there. So what we'll probably end up doing is making it be you click on the star and it says this star has five planets. Sure. And then you, if you, if you can't tell what the habitable ones, unless you've actually seen them. 
That the, seems reasonable to yeah. me. At least it gives you a little something to kind of kind of guide <clears throat> your scouting efforts. I mean, you've already there. It's. It, to, I know the point. I know what people are saying is they want to. Uh, I don't see a planet. Screw it. I'm out of here. You know, and they don't want to clear the fog around it. Sure. So, um, you know, we're playing with that. Now, I know a bunch of heathens who just put their freaking scouts on scout mode instead of scouting manually like like a real strategy game player, and that drives me crazy. <laughs> I, so, I'm one of those heathens. I know, you people, you drive me crazy, but think of all the hexes you could have been uncovering by no, slightly I more efficient both. scouting I moves. start. I start... Uh, I start the scanning, and then I will build a, a, a fancier, like an explorer or something, and send it out to. And I'll then tell it, "You go here. I want to know what this star over here is." Uh, the, this is kind of an interesting idea. The galactic ages need more definition. For example, in the age of exploration, the first person to find a star should be able to name it. Well, the the ability to name a star is unfortunately exclusive to our founders. No, you can just. <laughs> Oh, oh you, wait, you can't name... I don't think you can name stars. You're supposed to be able to name a star. Okay. So, so yeah, you'll be you able can, to name I mean, stars. It, you can literally... T- if you're a human <laughs> in the game, you can rename anything. You can... Act- Actually, I don't know if it's still true. Can, can I uh, Can I just go to, like, Drenji and rename Drenji? I think I can. I used to do that in Legendary Heroes a lot, yeah. where, like, so there would be some monster that gets spawned and is just, like, terrorizing me. I would name it something vulgar so I can yeah. remember, remember how to feel good when yeah. I finally get back and kill it. Weebs. <laughs> One. This is, oh. Yeah, so the dweebs are my enemy. <laughs> and that is because a lot of times you'll you'll name them like if you're playing, especially against the AI, you're like, well, who is who? Oh, it's that guy. And you can sure. just like literally rename this fleet to be the dweeb fleet. It's like, oh, they're the ones who were bothering me, you know, <laughs> uh, you know, so that. Yeah, you can. We we're big fans of the let you rename uh, whatever. Um, in multiplayer, I'm not quite sure how it works. I'd have to ask actually ask the developers whether you're just renaming it locally. I don't and know. Like I'm, the player on the other end would even in, see the change. I'm hearing some, or I'm, I'm imagining some pretty quality uh, griefing possibilities. Yeah, you could, there. you can, you know, I renamed your planet asshole. Oh, sorry. <laughs> asshole, oh God. <laughs> so, um, yeah, no, that's uh, that is definitely a thing that. Uh, Love those new explosions. Look at that. Um, so, sorry, I got distracted by the explosion. Okay. Um, oh, I can't wait till we get the new skyboxes. Oh, look at that. Look, look, look. Oh, you're sorry. so excited about it. I really wish that even in the other camera modes, I could go, I could do the free camera controls. We are changing that. And the reason why it's not done yet is because we're actually going to make it more almost like a first person shooter once you go into free mode. You'll be able to stop it. And what we might have, you might have to pause. I was trying to Jesse about just, can I just make it so if you grab the camera, it goes free. Uh huh. And that is apparently harder than it sounds. Okay. But we we might do that. But at the very least, if you pause, and you just start turning, it automatically goes into free mode. And then what happens is, unlike here, let's start a battle so I can express myself. <laughs> um, so I can do an example of this. This might. Oh. Apparently you met the iridium. Oh, are you uh, out of moves or something? Oh, I should get some iridium ships in here. Um, actually, ne- they won't be as balanced to fleets, but we can do some other races too. Um, we can do that. So next here, week. I hit pause, uh-huh. and then I uh, I can't move. Right, so I have to go to free, and then to you can rotate kind of normally, but then you have to drag, right? Which is right, very which is awkward. awful. Yes, right. So we're just gonna make it so you W A S D, just like in a sure. first person shooter. Sure. And this will better. actually make it really awesome for doing cinematography. Totally. So we can so you can get like really cool dolly shots of ships blowing up and stuff. I actually I was going to talk to you. I probably won't have time to do it today. I was thinking about coming up here and just recording a bunch of stuff. Um, I think that's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Now that we're getting there, and uh, there's still some movement uh, things that Jesse's working on where where things kind of weirdly pivot because they don't have any inertia. And things like that, but that's all. That'll all be fixed relatively shortly. Hopefully, next week's battle viewer will be that much better than this week's battle viewer. So. And it's going to make me cry thinking of all. The... And then the week after that will be better, and the and hopefully by then we'll be more or less done. <laughs> so cause eventually you're going to have to. I was going to say eventually you're going to have to yeah. actually finish the rest of the game. Well, too. also there's a whole new diplomacy. Oh, oh. Oh, Uh-oh. oops! That's quite the yeah, new diplomacy. Of which, here you go. No, this is not supposed to be in. I was actually expecting to see the old list. 
this is the beginning of the new diplomacy screen, which is going to be a 3D screen that is where um, all of the races are represented by their home, by their planet on a big uh, spiral, and, oh, cool. and it shows their relations. And then you can click on it and get a report on the planet, and you can click on each planet and see who's at war with who and who's trading with who. That would be way cooler. And, uh, and we had to do it that way because we're going to support 100 people. Right. And we needed this. We need a really flexible... Um, and we thought about doing it kind of like the UP with the holograms and all this stuff. And then I was going, God, this would be so much easier if these were just circles. And I was like, oh, if only we had something in our game that are circles. have something that is a circle. And then it, so then it kind of designed itself really quick. And I'm really happy with the design. And that's what Colin's working on now. So that'll be in, uh, that should be in beta uh, five as well. Sure. Uh, I had a couple of people asking if we were going to have another uh, bug fix, hot hot fix, bug patch, whatever. I believe we have one more planned, right? Okay. I, I don't know. Oh, you're, the, yeah. you're the designer. Well, they, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm the designer, but I'm not the producer. That's true. That's true. Um, I believe we have another one. Yes, yes, there is another one. I'm not sure what the schedule's like. I think, um, it's next week, I think we I have an wrong. opt-in next week, and then a then that will go out. Full deployment. Uh, full deployment. And yeah. it's not a huge, huge thing. It's mostly bug fixes. Right. Well, um, I think that, that's what people are mostly yeah, asking point, for. Yeah, at this point, we, we kind of are... get to the point where it's like, well, we can't put new stuff in because then we're maintaining two branches of the project. Right. And it acts a waste a bunch of time. And I'm sure people would rather we got, you know, the new features in rather than just sat and polished, you know, right. buggy things. Also, the Thalion are going in. The Iconians are going in. Um, oh, Yeah. Uh, they they'll be in the next build. Are they going to be? Oh, they're going to go in one of the one of the patches. No, or they're going to no, be in the next patch. Okay, no. I was like, no, no, really? no, no. Sorry, I did not mean to imply that. Um, the uh, but they're going to be in beta five, and uh, I'm working on them now. And uh, and then also in beta five, you will be able to make uh, your own races. Although oh, yeah. that is, uh, there's a couple features that may still be disabled, but I'm I'm hoping everything will be in. Nice. And it's mostly like you know the startup screen. Mm-hmm. That says this is the Terrans. We want you to be able to make your own, right? right. But it's not a high priority. <laughs> so that, like, if that doesn't get in, um, also the diplomacy stuff. We want you to be able to change, like, what your background is here and what binks you use, or if you, assuming you don't have a bink, what pictures you use, because you sure. you'll be able to sign a background picture and a foreground picture. Um, and that's how all the miners will be done. So you'll see that. And then you'll also be like, oh, I get it. Um, so that way also those people will show up in the UP and they'll show up in the starting screen when you choose race. Um, so that's all very exciting. Awesome. All right. See, Let's oh, look, see. Here's the Italian and the Iconians, but they don't. And they still say after your descriptions on them. People are asking about uh, ship roles and if they can get more details on them. I mean, ship roles are... Um, the ship roles, I don't want to give too much details on because right now I keep saying it's a defender, it's an escort, it's an assault ship. That is going to become much more fuzzy because what makes a thing an escort will be determined by what is on it. Right. So there will every, every ship will have a new stat that's called like threat. And you'll go, oh... And these guys, and and the depending on the parts on it, will say this ship will go after the highest threat targets. This ship will go after the support tar- targets. These sure. Are, so there's really we're trying to break it down to just three different roles. There's you know ass- essentially breaks down to assault, support, and um, interception really. Sure. So those are the three main things, or escort really. It's escort, escort, assault, and interception. Um. I mean, and support. And so support, those, so there's three. Kind of so that's, that's whereas right now there's literally five in the game, um, and only I have access to them, so players don't get to. Enjoy <laughs> that. But that'll be something that'll be a lot more transparent once it's a little more. Baked. Yes, yes. And uh, uh, but it, but like I said, that's a, and a system that I we are working on as we speak. So. Sure. Uh, Oh, I should have switched to a different race. I uh, had a question about uh, the possibility of planets sponsoring other planets or, or kind hey, of sending their production around. That is really blue me. It doesn't have a star. Oh, it's a bug. Hey, Colin. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I reproduced that bug. <laughs> okay, so clear wow. fog. Okay, here's how yeah. you do it. You clear the fog of war. <laughs> um, then you exit the game and start a new game. Oh, no, you clear the fog of war. You redo the fog of war. Oh, there you That's go. That's what I did. That's why he couldn't <laughs> reproduce it. Okay. if you Jesse, if you're listening to this, tell Colin. 
you clear the fog of war, you turn the fog war back on, you start a new game, and the old star particles are still there. So All you right. guys have seen the cutting edge debugging process <laughs> that is Gal Sim 3. <laughs> Actually, ironically, it looks kind of cool. <clears throat> also, you'll notice that in the mini map, you can now see the stars. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, right. it's less important as than it was in Gal Sim 2 sure. um, because you can see them on the main map. But, sure. Yeah. Very cool. All right. Anything else you want to get to before I shut this thing uh, down? For I the week? guess not. I mean, we can do all kinds of more battles and stuff, but the new features will be coming in. Uh, hopefully, we'll have something besides. I mean, it's hard for me not to just battle all the time, um, <laughs> because, especially because that's all I'm working on right now. Well, Are you sure all. it's not just your warrior spirit? No, it's not my warrior spirit. It's because mostly I just sit there and go, does this look cool enough yet? Does this look cool <laughs> enough yet? Um, we really want it to be cool. We want it to be fun. And we want a hologra- hologlass version. Right. Just so, you know, so Microsoft, <laughs> hook us up. We'll, uh, everybody will love it. So. Oh, yeah. Do we, are we, do we have square maps? Are we, are we back to square no, maps? No, no. This is maps? a bug. This, oh. Okay. This yeah, yeah, is a I, bug. Some people notice that in, in the, uh, the, when I made this transparent, it broke out this. Uh, this is essentially the end of the universe. Okay. For the for the for the actual render code. And I so see. It dies. But that dotted line is still the the yeah, actual the dotted line or is the actual is, that's your range. Sorry. Yes. But no, the, but yes, the, but the edge of the map is actually still it is oh, still a hex. If I turn off the grid. Does it? There you go. So you can see kind Man, of. I don't know how anybody plays with the grid on. I can't. Uh, do it. You know, I'm. Uh, we were just talking about maybe having it as you zoom out. Uh, LOD out, but oh, now yeah. that we have this transparency, I might actually just turn the grid, get turn the the exterior grid back off. So I still like I, I always play with the option on where it's only grid inside your borders or inside anybody's borders with like the colored grid. Where'd it go? Is it broken? Uh, I, yeah, I think you have to go all the way into the into the option screen to, to turn. Well, it that's off. not cool, <laughs> Colin. Oh, you want to have it Somebody be like a three-way that. toggle? It was supposed. To, it was a three-way toggle. Was it seriously? I yes. guess I've never used the. Uh, I never used the hotkey. No, it's always been a three-way toggle ever since we put it in. Yeah, hide grid outside influence. Oh, maybe it is broken, because it was checked and it wasn't doing it in the game. Well, that's embarrassing. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I probably broke it when I turned the grid back on in the fog. So. Oh yeah. Anyways, we're working on that. Um, I would actually really love this just to be a sexy or line and have it kind of fade out as it goes out. Yeah, but because um, it, it kind of looks like a, uh, it kind of looks like a like a fur fringe on your hood right now. Oh, this <laughs> with, like the way it comes off of it, and the rest of it's flat. But I mean, that's it's, oh, it's, it's, it's a one point these days. It does. Look at it, or like a weird space waterfall. I'm going it, to space waterfall. It is a space waterfall. <laughs> but that's that's why we have you okay. know beta features and. I'm going to have right. artists burning right. down my office here shortly. Uh, all right. Sorry we didn't get to a lot of your questions here today, everybody. It is uh, it is becoming increasingly difficult to do so. But uh, hopefully you got something out of the stream. Uh, we have – should be an opt-in patch coming soon for uh, for just some more bug fixes. And then, and then we're on to beta 5 and then on to release shortly thereafter. So very exciting. We're definitely – Things are starting to come together. So uh, starting things are things are coming together pretty. Things good. are coming together. They're going to come together fast and furious. Uh, pretty much from this point on, um, you know, it's it's very exciting for us. It's a little nerve wracking, but it's very exciting. Speaking of fast and furious, I have to give a shout out to the best joke I've seen on Twitter in the last like two months. Why are you looking at Twitter? That's really Twitter is the best. No, so it was in regards to the Harper Lee book news, oh, right? And somebody How tweeted, does you go from Fast and Furious to <laughs> because Harper Lee. Because the joke was, I can't believe she didn't go with Two Kill, Two Mockingbird for the sequel, <laughs> which is the best joke. Oh, cut me up. Anyway, uh, so you're all welcome for that. I know I've just really uh, kickstarted your weekend here in a big like way. Bad literary. <laughs> So puns, good. Puns, I guess that counts as a Is pun. it a pun? I, I don't know, know what that is. Anyway, uh, all right. <laughs> we'll be back on Wednesday with Sorcerer King. Mohawk uh, is streaming Off World Trading Company, which is just kind it's of revealed good. every Thursday. Cool. Um, and they are looking really good. So very excited there. I'm assuming they're doing that from somewhere besides here. <laughs> they are. They are indeed. They're not actually flying yes. out to uh, Plymouth every Thursday. Yeah. But uh, that would be kind of cool. I mean, we would we would welcome that if they wanted to. We love those guys. But uh, but no, and they're they've been doing like multiplayer streams every like 
yeah. over lunch like it's three a times really a week. fun game it's it a is. really fun game and they've been playing it it's funny as they've been playing it for like, ever i mean he had a big really he had a playable prototype like so early on it kind of makes me sick you know how it's i mean it's <laughs> Uh, Soren is kind of a freaky genius, and he's like, "Oh, I can just do this. Yeah, I'll just mod up this whole thing. All right, this is how the game should play. Now let's make the game." Right. D- Derek does that too, but I, I'm always like, "Let's get it working and then polish it." And everybody does that, but right. the fact that he had it like so close to, I mean, like functionally playable, functionally it was ugly, I mean, I mean, ugly as hell. It's amazing. Yeah. Anyway, so big shout out to Mahawk. We love those guys. Anyway, thanks everybody for joining in. Hope you enjoy your weekend. We Bye. will be.